What I Did on My British Vacation by Dr. Phil, Episode 1, Critical Power. So as some of you know, and some of you don't know, I spent the last couple of years working at the University of Exeter in the UK. Um, what I've been doing here is a lot of work on what the determinants are about the performance um, and how we can make athletes better uh, by different kinds of interventions. So um, one of the main things I work on is what's called critical power and the W prime, or what used to be called the anaerobic work capacity. So if you found your way here, um, I'm presuming you want to learn a little something about this. So if we made a graph of power and time, where power is over here and time is over here, and then we asked an athlete to do a bunch of different tests where we said um, ride for this long as far long hard as you can, ride for this long as hard as you can, ride for this long as hard as you can, and so on. What you'd get is a bunch of points that look like this. So you can see here that for short periods of time, we can go way, way harder than we can for long periods of time. So what we can do is draw a line through all these. Now the interesting thing is when you draw this line, it looks like it levels out someplace. Um, mathematically, that's called an asymptote. But the important thing is that's critical power or the threshold power. This is that um, effort level you feel where you say, okay, if I, I can go this hard, I can go this hard for a while, but if I go a little bit harder, I'm going to blow up right away. Um, it's something probably close to your uh, 30 minute to 60 minute best power or something like your best uh, 10K running pace or something like that. So you get an idea of what we're talking about here. So. The other interesting thing is that we can draw a little box. So if we make a box that connects the one axis over to one of these points and down to the critical power line, that area is called the W prime. Okay, um, It's a measure of energy. Now what you can see is actually we can draw boxes to any of these points. And the interesting thing is that they're always the same size. Sometimes they're tall and skinny, sometimes uh, they're long and skinny, but no matter what, there's the same amount of energy in each of these boxes. Now what that means is that once you get above your critical power, you have a very limited amount of energy that you can expend. You can expend it real quick by going real hard, or you can expend it over a longer period of time by going easier, but either way, you've only got the same amount. And if you use it all up, you're going to blow up or have to slow down. So it's important to know what this is all about. So one of the ways you can think of this is like a battery. At the start of your workout, you've got 100%. And if you do intervals until you explode, uh, you end up with 0% left in your battery. Um, and so that's obviously something you want to avoid, particularly if you're in a race situation. So let's think of this in terms of a workout. Let's say we went out and started doing intervals. So there's our critical power. And here's the power for intervals. So maybe that's 200 watts, and maybe that's like 300 watts. So we're going 300, and then we're covering real easy, and then we're going hard again, and then we're covering real easy. But what's happening is this, is every time you go above the critical power, if you look at the area of that box right there, that corresponds to some of your battery being drained. But what you can see is that when you drop down below the critical power, the battery starts to recharge again. Then you go above again, and it starts to empty again. And you can imagine that this workout is over once that hits zero, uh, if that makes sense. So um, if you think about it just as a graph of your W prime, or the charge in your battery that you use up whenever you go above the critical power, um, you look at this as time, what you see is this. You go above critical power, and the charge drops. Um, but you go below critical power, it takes some recovery, and you recharge, but only a little bit. And you do it again. And you recharge, but only a little bit. And eventually you get to zero, and you have to stop, and the athlete gets exhausted. So the important thing you have to realize is this battery recharges really slowly. Um, even if you get off your bike and eat a burrito, it looks like it takes about 30 minutes to totally refill the tank. And it gets slower the harder you're going. So let's say if your critical power was 200 watts and you drop down to 199 watts, yeah, you're recharging, but really slowly. It would take you hours and hours and hours to recharge the battery. Um, versus if you were able to go really, really easy, if you got down to 2 watts, um, it might recharge in 20 to 30 minutes. So that's an important thing to remember, and that's the reason why when you're in a race, uh, particularly if it's something like a triathlon where you've got to run later, 
or if it's a stage race if you're on the bike, um, that you don't want to spend too much time above critical power because once you spend time up there, you are using some of this battery and once it's gone, it's pretty much gone. So, um, you can think about that in this way. Like I said, you go high above critical power and they drop below, um, or you go high above critical power and you drop way below critical power. And what you end up seeing is just that. Here you would get slow recharge, here you would get fast recharge. So, Race Day Apollo, which is my software package, is the only software that figures this out for you. And we put these equations into the program so that you could look at races and see maybe what you did wrong, or so that you could put in uh, interval workouts and see whether you'd be able to finish them or not. Um, so it's a really useful tool in that regard. So head on over to http.www.fizzfarm.com uh, and have a look-see um, and have a play with it. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.